All right, gang. So the last few videos that we've done have all talked about acceleration calculations. And they've all been pretty straightforward because the acceleration has been positive, meaning it's been the, the object has been speeding up. This one, we're going to put a little twist on it because now we're going to start talking about what happens when you decelerate or when you start slowing down. And it's really not all that different than anything else. We just want to figure out how do we solve acceleration problems when the objects are slowing down. And just remember, slowing down means deceleration, and that's the same as having a negative acceleration. So in these examples that we're going to work on together, just remember this. Now the objects are slowing down. When objects slow down, it means that the acceleration is negative. And we're going to use the exact same equations as before. Just this time, we're going to give those acceleration values a, a, a negative. Okay? Um, so let's, let's go through this. So here's the first example. We've got an object that's traveling at 50 meters per second. And it starts slowing down at a rate of 7.5 meters per second squared. Now, if it takes four seconds to come to a stop, how far did it travel? So we're going to just do this the exact same way that we've done the other ones, um, but just with a little twist on the, on the acceleration. So for this one, what we want to do is make sure we identify what it is we're trying to find. So we're trying to figure out how far did it travel. So we're looking for distance. And if we're trying to find distance, um, let's take a look at some of the other things that, that we know. Now, we know that the object is traveling at 50 meters per second. So that's going to be velocity. And in fact, that's going to be our initial velocity, since that's what we're starting out with. But we also know, OK, that here we have our acceleration. It's, a, it's slowing down at a rate of 7.5 meters per second squared. So if it's slowing down, that means we have a negative acceleration. So now I'm just going to write that as acceleration equals negative 7.5 meters per second squared. And there's another thing in here that we know um, that is just kind of assumed. Um, it says if it takes four seconds to slow, come to a stop, how far did it travel? Well, to come to a stop, that means my final velocity is 0 meters per second. And the other thing that we know is that time equals 4 seconds. Hopefully you can read that. All right, so now that we are, know that we're trying to find distance, uh, we have initial velocity, we have a negative acceleration, we have final velocity and a time, which equation are we going to use? So you dig around in your notes and you see, OK, distance equals initial velocity times time plus 1 half the acceleration times the time squared. So now I just start plugging things in. So my initial velocity is 50 meters per second. My time is 4 seconds. And one of these days I'm going to learn how to write. Then we have plus 1 half, and my acceleration, okay, remember, acceleration is negative 7.5 meters per second squared. So negative 7.5 meters per second squared. And then multiply that by the time squared. So once again, time is 4 seconds. Square that. All right, so we have distance equaling 50 meters per second times 4 seconds plus 1 half times negative 7.5 meters per second squared times 4 seconds squared. So if I go and plug that into my calculator, I'm going to get right around 140 meters in order to or in order to stop. Now think about what would happen if this was if your acceleration wasn't negative, okay? If if it wasn't negative, this would end up being this right here would be a positive number and that you would have to add or you would end up adding those together and that just wouldn't make sense. Um, so remember when something is decelerating you have to use a negative acceleration. All right here's the next one. In this one we've got an object traveling 60 kilometers per hour and it decelerates at a rate of 9 meters per second squared. How many seconds does it take to stop? Now, you'd think that this would be easy, uh, but it's a little itty bitty bit tricky. So there's a few things that, that we have to do. Now the first part that we run into is that 60 kilometers per hour 
and nine meters per second squared just don't play nice, okay? It's, it's apples to oranges. So what we've got to do is we've got to take kilometers per hour and change those into meters per second so that way the math works out. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So think about, think about this. All right, so we did this a while. You're gonna set up your, your picket fence. So what we're trying to do is get 60 kilometers per hour and change, figure out how many meters per second that is. So here's a few things that, that I know, okay? Um, the first thing is that I'm gonna have to change kilometers into meters. And then I'm also going to need to change hours into seconds. Now these are both pretty easy when we use that picket fence, um, but just have to kind of think through it first. Now remember, I know that I have, if I have one kilometer, that is equal to a thousand meters. So I can write that as one kilometer per thousand meters or one thousand meters per one kilometer. Now on this hours to seconds, some people know how many seconds are in an hour. I don't. So I have to go from hours to minutes and then from minutes to, to seconds. So I know that I have in one hour, I have, oh, 60, it's supposed to be a six, 60 minutes. And in one minute, I have 60 seconds. All right, so that, and you do the same thing. Uh, you can have one hour per 60 minutes or 60 minutes per one hour, one minute per 60 seconds or 60 seconds per one. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set up my little picket fence here. And this is what I know. So that goes right down there. So I have 60 kilometers in one hour. And remember what I want is I want my final answer to have meters on top and seconds on bottom. So I'm gonna to have to do two of these little transformations, the, the kilometers into meters and hours into seconds, and it really doesn't matter which one I do first. So um, I'm gonna start with the, the kilometers and change that into meters. So over here I've got my 60 kilometers and I want to use one of these to get kilometers to cancel out and end up with meters. So kilometers is on top up here. I want to get kilometers on the bottom down here so those units cancel out. So this one right here looks like it works. So 1,000 meters over one kilometer. So kilometers cancel out. Got meters on top. We want meters on top over here, so we're all set. Now we need to go and take hours and turn that into seconds. So hours is down here, so we're gonna need hours to cancel out so that we end up with minutes. So if I go over here and take one hour equals 60 minutes, I can write this as one hour over 60 minutes. Okay, so that makes hours cancel out here, hours cancel out here. Now I just want to get rid of minutes, end up with seconds. So I'm going to use this relationship right here. So I have one minute per every 60 seconds. So minutes cancel out. And I'm just going to take a quick look here. Uh, kilometers cancel out, I end up with meters on top. Hours cancel out, minutes cancel out, and I end up with seconds on bottom. And that's exactly what I want. So if I go and put that in the good old calculator, and figure out there, I'm going to end up with somewhere close to um, 16.7 meters per second. That is supposed to be a six, six or a, a six. And I'm not really worried about sig figs right here. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the first part. Now now we can go back to the other part that we need to in order to have our, our figure this out. So now let's take a look at this. An object traveling, we know it's not 60 kilometers per hour. We change that 16.7 meters per second. Decelerates at a rate of nine meters per second squared. How many seconds does it take to stop? All right, so let's figure out what we know. Okay, first of all, or we're, what we're trying to find. We're trying to figure out how many seconds does it take. So we're looking for 
for time. That's our question mark. But the other things that we know is we know that it's traveling at 16.7 meters per second, so that's my initial velocity. We know that it comes to a stop, so my final velocity is equal to 0 meters per second. We know that it's decelerating at a rate of negative, let's see, acceleration equals negative 9 meters per second squared. So which equation are we going to use to try to figure this out? Because we're trying to figure out time. Now, none of the equations that I've given you have solved directly for time. So what we're going to need to do is take one of those, um, take one of those equations that we've talked about in the past, do a little bit of algebra magic, and go and solve for time. So here's what we're going to do. Remember, acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the, the change in time, all right, which is the same as the final velocity minus the initial velocity all over time. So if we look at this, we've got, okay, we need to find time right here. Uh, we, need, we have initial velocity. We have final velocity. We have acceleration. So these are all the one, or are all the all that we need. We just have to switch things around to get time. Um, so I'm just assuming you know how to to solve for t. If you don't, let me let me know. But if I go and do that, I'm going to have t or time equal to the change in velocity over acceleration. So that's going to be the same as being equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity all divided by, by time. So I go and I plug everything in. So final velocity is 0 meters per second. Initial velocity is 16 meters per second, so minus 16.7 meters per second. And then my, oh, I screwed up here. No, I didn't. I lied. We're okay. That's just supposed to be acceleration. That's a story of my life there. All right. And acceleration is negative 9 meters per second squared. So think a little, before we actually get the, get the answer here, think, th think this through. Now, time needs to be positive, all right, in this case. Um, so if I am decelerating, my final velocity is 0. Okay, my initial velocity is the 16.7, so that 0 minus 16.7 is a negative number. And also remember, since I'm decelerating, my acceleration is negative. So a negative divided by a negative is a, is a positive. And in this t case, if I take negative 16.7 meters per second and divide it by negative meters per second squared, I'm going to end up with positive 1.85-ish seconds for how long it takes to slow down. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. But hopefully that makes sense now on how to solve for um, deceleration problems. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know.